Hello everyone, it's Akata again. Today I am so thrilled to share with you one of the sessions that I have done with my clients. And the reason that I want to share this session with you is because of her hilarity. I think she embodied the energy of Lilith in her so much divine feminine that also because she is part of the total in Scorpio generation of her life in self-discovery and in facing the shadows, the fears and in a sense also being abandoned by, by society to be on their own feet and um, I think that is very representative of her of her chart and in in this video I have actually put the final part of our session at the beginning where we were only doing um, a follow-up a chit chat after the the whole session finished and it was then that I have this download of his um, past life experience. And it was amazing for me to receive divine message and to share it with her. That make some of the points that I was talking during the sessions that makes a lot more sense for both of us. And um, Yeah, I hope you enjoy it and I have to thank her so much for giving me permission to share her fantastic energy with you. If you would like to have a consultation with me, please visit my website, becominglotus.org. It is always an honor to be of service. To help you a little bit un um, understand, you didn't ask for the galactic astrology, but I have a look at it without really explaining whatever that we are already <laughs> one hour <laughs> and a half. I wanted to say that to you that your 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 lilies is conjunct the sharply attractive that only this we have only discovered in recent years so that make it so deep so the consciousness from there we simply don't understand the 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 death of those beings that came from there we simply cannot imagine okay so if we link it with your lily at zero degree that is a hell in a in a way it seems secret but because it seems secret because we don't understand And this would go hand in hand with Alpha Chantaris. Alpha Chantaris, I relate to the Ascended Masters. And you have also your moon with Sirius A, the ancient Egypt that we know is related to the Orion, to Isis. There is so much divine feminine energy in you. And there is one more thing that you don't have any, uh, you don't have any direct aspect, not conjunct, not, not opposition, but you have so many um, that is not even shown here. Is called uh, uh, a constellation called Niha. That caught my attention. Like when I look at it, 
whatever got my attention, I, I look at it. Regardless, a logical explanation, right? That's how we how our intuition works. I have a feeling that, in a way, with all this sitting, you are going through from here on with, with Pluto, with, with with your Jupiter, with your Saturn and Neptune that we talk about. You are seeding something for you in later stage to bring it out as a teaching. I don't know what it is. I don't know the details. <laughs> but I think that is something you gonna teach. Allow. Allow. You have psyche conjunct moon. Allow. Allow the divine to talk to you, with you. With that, I say thank you. And I stop sharing. Okay. <laughs> and so far, what do you think? Oh, um, that was really great. Um, it definitely all makes sense. It's coming together, definitely. It's a lot to process. Like, I was... It's a lot. Like, I feel things very physically. And um, so I was having kind of a lot of different physical stuff happening. Like, I noticed when you were telling the Sedna story, I got... Oh, horrible headache like war i was like oh my god like what is this headache and then once you were done telling it it started to go away so i'm kind of like kind of notice like what you know the energies that i'm kind of feeling through all of this and i know it'll take a while for it to process but there's definitely a lot mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well the, the, the fact is there are so many hidden parts of us that we don't understand and that's why I love asteroid so much. I mean, the planets can help us so much. It's already huge information. But for us to utilize those planetary energy, we need to know who we are. We need to feel deep. Without asteroid, without no, because everyone, almost everyone of us is being described so negative. And with that, even more important for us to bring out that energy, to reclaim the power of those energy, just as Lilith. Everyone saying Lilith, condemning Lilith. And saying, you think you are all this pristine? Mm -hmm. I mean, and without going deep, those planetary energy, they can't come out. And Sedna, when you if you feel like that, maybe that was the part that was really missing for you to understand of the of of the letting go of the of forgiveness. And it just came down to me. And I think when you were with that, oh Jesus. <laughs> Hang on, let, give me a second. You were once upon a time very famous, important person. And you were brutally betrayed. And you carried that injustice with you. Oh gosh. Yeah, and I know, and I've had a lot of like past life recall. And so it, that's correct. And it's been very painful, but the betrayal was, I don't want to say, I don't want to say, because it wasn't like they betrayed me it, as much as it was like something really bad happened, I guess. Okay. I think that is not just one lifetime. That is a playing out of several lifetimes. 
as if that was a testing ground of how much faith you have in trusting and how to trust and what to trust, who to trust. And this, because you always have this very, oh Jesus, you always have this very potent presence. They were, you have, you knew it, you knew people were coming to just have a sip of those, of those lights, of those essence, right? And you let them. You choose to let yourself to trust, right? But, and, but then, sooner or later, because while enjoying it, Leo is so much about also of, of the egotentic, of the egoism. Now you have to come back to deal with it so much of this betrayal of of Setner of 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 of, of Lily so that so that you still keep your heart open in Aquarius with your moon with your moon it's not so much your north node in Aquarius it's north node in Aquarius with your moon that part of not letting your heart die is so important. Yeah. And and so and look, the hardest part is already gone. <laughs> That's good to know because I've been having a lot of fears because I've been having a lot of scary stuff come up and I'm like I don't know what I'm going to go through next like I'm, I'm kind of worried but I hope that the hardest part is gone <laughs> but yeah that is that is you 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 are searching for something that is not ordinary just as everything that I said about you that is not the 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 the, the within the box Thank you again and be good care. Be very kind, very gentle with yourself. Yeah, I'm needing to learn how to do that. <laughs> oh, we learn, we learn. This is your natal chart. And to be honest, I find your chart very particular that I like you have studied your own natal chart right yeah okay so you know that you have your sun in scorpio ascendant in capricorn and moon in aquarius that may apart from that you have stallion together with your sun you have stallion in your ascendant that make you a person that is, in a way, what you show to the outside world is so... Mm, concrete. It's almost like leave no space for people to, to guess, to imagine the kind of person that you are. It's like the moment they see you, they know you. Who you are. And even they may not know it consciously, but they subconsciously already feel the, the, the kind of person that you are. And together with that, in in your uh, in your sun sign, eleventh house. But it is Scorpio. So, like everything about you, it, there is some like the pu the push and pull of the polarity or the duality in it that. You have your son. That's how you show to the world. But, and you have your Mars and Mercury there. So which means that all your actions and, and, and your expressions is through your, Merc uh, your Scorpio. But then Scorpio, if we look a little bit more in depth, that he is quite private 
as far as a Scorpio goes, that he might prefer not to be too outstanding. That people don't look at them that much because they are so deep in their thinking, in their feelings. They would they would have prefer to to keep everything by themselves to themselves, right? And but here you have your action and you and, and, and your and your and your mercury. So which makes you like in a sense in, in a way that is actually helping you to, to bring out the, the the deepness that is in you. But before you can do that, we we follow how, how these how these planets move. But you before you can actually have action or to express you have to deal with lilies. It's almost impossible to bring it out. Mm. As a Scorpio, already hard, and you have the lilies here. Okay, before I go on, I would like to ask your relationship with your parents. You, in a way that Either you, do, you 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 didn't feel the connection, or you didn't have the support from from both sides. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's a it's it, it's. I feel like it's more of an inner thing. And the fact that you have so much in 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 Scorpio is like it is. Like, Okay, the thing is, like, even people would like to understand you. It's hard for them to understand regardless, right? But I would say, like, you come in with this energy, and later on, you also, okay, I am jumping so much because there's okay. not here. Okay. Scorpio, who are the ruling planets of Scorpio? That is Pluto as modern and Mars. As the, uh, as the traditional ruler. So, if we take the modern ruler of Scorpio, uh, 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 Scorpio as as Pluto, the Pluto Scorpio generation. Later on, I will just talk about your Scorpio Pluto generation, which is so particular, mm. and and they are both here. So make what it means is your Scorpio essence energy is double emphasized by both Mars here and Pluto here. On top of that, you have Lilith. So Lilith as the first planet in your eleventh house where your sun sits is zero degree and erratic degree so you have the Pluto generation already in Scorpio with your son with that you put on also Lily I can imagine as a little girl during teenage year how frustrating that is <laughs> that was for you to ever communicate and relate Mm -hmm. Regardless, you have the abilities, but that is the abilities that I believe, if we look at the natal chart, that as ascendance is when we are when we were born, that is the first cycle. When we go through this cycle, and then when we come back, usually co coincide with the Saturn cycle of 30, 35 years, and we the next time when we go around, we become much better. But as a little girl, at early stage, with so much concentration of energy in Scorpio, gosh, with Lily, zero degree, it's like you you were born Lily. <laughs> Regardless your ascendant, all the all these, all these others, like you were literally born Lilith. Mm -hmm. And that put a lot of emphasis of that sense of maybe also 
with your parents the sense of abandonment? I'm not saying they have abandoned you, but that sense of abandonment, of mm -hmm. not being understood, of being so different from the others, that in a way, you are such a beautiful person. Your eyes just like so brilliant. But then again, like that is this sense of unapproachable for the mm -hmm. others. Do you with you? Because then Scorpio is a fixed sign. Everything about Scorpio is fixed. Don't move. Don't even try to move me, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and so you have this fixed sign there with Scorpio and your ascendant. Here is interesting because between uh, Scorpio and Capricorn, they are actually sextiling. So in a way, it's a better flow of energy between how the people see you and how you really feel yourself. Okay, your, with your ascendant. Now, your ascendant in Capricorn with ascendant and Venus literary conjunct on the same team. A little second different differences, but it's zero one degree. So if you were born, as I said before, as Lilith, you live by Venus with Uranus here tie conjunct to your ascendant that you you were breaking rules <laughs> right from the beginnings everything that people tell you okay now little chalice <laughs> you do this and you might look at them and say thanks good idea but you are somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Right? <sighs> okay. Here come another another um, um, nuance. Which I find... That's what... You, your chart is like this. Okay. It's like one way we can pinpoint who she is. And then there's another thing say, not exactly. <laughs> Here we have... Saturn and Neptune. While Saturn could be this father figure that help you to understand much better of who you are and what you come here to do as, as a person with your son. It is in the first house and in a way you have, I think you have always been feeling that you were on your own feet. You were the one that taught yourself, guides yourself where to go, what to do and how. And it's supported, it's supported by the love that if you have difficulties in developing in you, you have in you, it's installed in you so very much in your first house. The moon in Aquarius is actually squaring 16 degree, squaring your sun and your Pluto. That make it very hard because as much as you can't communicate in the early stage and that hurt so much that emotional side of that little girl inside of you that your emotional was was having difficulty to express and one particular thing of moon in Aquarius 
we know now that we are going into Aquarian age with Pluto in Aquarius, we are talking about mass consciousness, highest consciousness that Aquarius want to love, to share it so much. But then again, even without looking at your at your sun sign in 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 Scorpio, Aquarius need so much space that kind of solitude to be within herself to in tune with her emotion so that she can come out again with that in the, your second house you also have your north node which is 21 degree let's say you came in with lifetimes of experience where you were highly individual you had you had you had had experience that you you caught you receive a lot of attention that you have no problem to express yourself and maybe in some of those lifetime you would have ex be so self-centered, so self-eccentric that somehow you lose the sight of who you are. And so this lifetime you come back with the nuance of a Scorpio. The moment for you to go deep again, understanding exactly who you were, who you are here, and your first test is Lily. So, with this kind of background that you have no problem in shining and you still have no problem in shining yourself, but it's not what you need to do just to shine for yourself. You need to shine now, go back to Aquarius with your moon we are just entering this Pluto in Aquarius for the next 20 years Sagner in um, in your fifth house so Sagner is 10 degree in Taurus that's direct opposite to your 11th degree mercury to be able to let your creativity and a sense of self-assurance to express also not only what you do what you today we are in social media and blah 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 and also to express the love that you have in you with sadness it's almost like when we hang on to what we know, even though what we know is not welcoming, with the cruelty of her father, cut her up of her fingers and everything, when we go into the unknown, we find something magical beyond our imagination. So now here you have in your fifth house about your creativity, about your romantic expression and opposite your your mercury so what my take is together with also the opposite sign with with lilith that is an invitation for you really to go out from the boxes that you have already with your yearness in your first house really to come out build up something that is out of ordinary have no fear explore go to places that you don't know honing in with your moon Pluto in Scorpio you people come in to say, okay, now you people have 
prove everything you have done is not working. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let me tell you. What you have done is very good. Thank you. But now let's us take in a new direction. So you, in a way, your generation is the Armageddon generation. The first generation of children start to say, yeah, you tell me to do that, mom. But actually, I want to go there. With Scorpio. Just like you, 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 you in person, you in person, Pluto in Scorpio in you. Gosh. The deepness, the deepness in it. Everyone of those generations, I think, for them, in their first 10, 15 years, it was like hell. What? I am doing here. Why I have to? Why everything that being told? I don't agree. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I know it, but I can't express this because I'm still a little person. I still have to listen to my mom, my dad. I still have to go through the the school system that doesn't really make sense, right? So you were the first generation of really breaking the rules, telling the older generation, look people, you, you are, your system is not working. Stop holding on to it. But we are, we, like, I am a mother. I, I taught my children with my old way. Until I know this way. So I will part of those Virgo generation that we follow rules. We, f we were in the system. And your the generation say, okay, mom, chill out. <laughs> I don't want to go to university. And I just have to accept it. Something like that. Okay, so you're the generation of breaking rules, Armageddon, telling everything to the face. Doesn't work. But you still don't know what to work. What works? Your generation from 1883 to 95, you're the generation say, okay, we know. But we don't know exactly how. But at the moment, just let loose and just break rules. Okay. Then with growing up, you have the Sagittarius, Capricorn. Okay, Sagittarius would be like during your 20th years. And Capricorn is the last 15 years. And I think in the last 15 years, with Pluto going over the whole Capricorn in your first house, was a hell of a time for you. Yes, it's been hell. <laughs> I'm trying to get out of it. <laughs> okay, so we go to... And in 2013, when you experienced that, Pluto was, con was going touching with your Saturn, that literally swept out everything under your feet. Yeah. And then we know in you have Lilith return in 2016, another big event. And two years later, you have Saturn return 2018. Now, without rush, think about it. 2018, how everything changed for you too. Too close, not really closing, but too close. I would say for you as a person, because of the Pluto is going into your 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 your, your uh, Aquarius with your Moon in Aquarius. 
with everything that you have in Scorpio and in Capricorn, you could be a true leader. But before you can be one, you need to know who you are. And that is a hell of a transformation you are going through. You have already done so much. So much. Ever since you were born, I write until today. With all this movement. And it and and allow the transformation to take you to places that you can't even imagine. There's so much, so much in you. And when we have a chart that is so concentrated with energy, that is a reflection that a person has so much. The harder for us to integrate, <laughs> the brighter we are going to, to shine. Okay? Yeah. Thank you again. And take good care. Be very kind. Very gentle with yourself. Yeah, I'm needing to learn how to do that. <laughs> oh, we learn, we learn. <laughs>